All sentient beings have been our mothers, and all sentient beings have been our mothers for numberless times. They are as kind as the mothers of this life. Even though all kind mothers and sentient beings want happiness and do not want even a small suffering, however, due to engaging uh, wrongly in objects of abandonment and objects of adoptions, they create karma that bring forth the result of suffering only. In our mind, sincerely generate loving kindness towards all kind mothers sentient beings thinking. How nice if all kind mothers sentient beings had excellent happiness. May all kind mothers sentient beings have excellent happiness. I will cause all kind mothers sentient beings to have excellent happiness. Lama, please bless me to be able to do so. Next, we generate compassion to toward all suffering mothers and tim beings, thinking, how nice if three doors of all suffering mothers and tim beings were free from all discordant class for accomplishing virtue. May three doors of all suffering mothers and sentient beings be free from the all discordant class for accomplishing virtue. I will cause three doors of all suffering mothers and sentient beings to be free from all discordant class for accomplishing virtue. Lama, please bless me to be able to do so. Next, we generate bodhicitta. First, we ask ourselves who should take the responsibility to free all mother sentient beings from the sufferings of samsara and of lower realms. I should take the responsibility to free all mother sentient beings from the sufferings of samsara and of lower realms. However, I do not have the ability to do so now. Only those who have achieved perfect, complete enlightenment have the ability to do so. Therefore, for the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Buddha. Next, 
Next, we generate all encompassing yoga mind. The aspiring conventional bodhicitta that thinks for the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Buddha. These transform into a perfect white mundis at one's heart. And the ultimate bodhicitta, that is one's mind becoming one taste with emptiness. There is all phenomena are lacking of inherent existence. This transform into a white five prong vajra on top of the mundis. Next, we meditate on emptiness. That I exist neither intrinsically one with nor intrinsically different from the aggregates. As I do not exist intrinsically. Next is to conjoin this session with the practice of six perfections. <coughs> and the first one is the practice of generosity. And generosity is mainly about the mind of giving. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, whatever roots of virtue that I accumulate, I give it I, and I dedicate it for sentient beings' happiness. <laughs> Next one is the practice of morality. And morality is mainly about the minds of abandoning. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, I will abandon my physical and verbal negativities so that they do not manifest. Next is the practice of patience. And patience is an undisturbed mind or an unscattered mind. During these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, whatever physical and hardships that whatever physical and mental hardships that occur, I will be patient with it. I will I will be willingly accept it. Next one is the practice of joyous effort. 
joyous effort is in the nature of a mind, being a mind enthusiastic for uh, virtue. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, I will take delight in accumulating virtue and working for the welfare of sentient beings. Next is the practice of meditative concentration. Meditative concentration is a mind single-pointedly abiding on any of the uh, any of the objects of virtue. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma. I will guard my mind from all discordant class so that my mind can be single pointedly focused on the virtuous object that is today's lesson. Next is the practice of wisdom. Wisdom is an awareness that thoroughly distinguishes the phenomena. So during these two hours of listening, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, I will properly um, I will properly understand the meaning of the, the words, the meaning of the words, and I will also identify the benefits of listening, uh, contemplating and meditating on Dharma, and I will properly identify the objects of abandonment and adoptions. <laughs> Set motivation. For the sake of all sentient beings, I will become Buddha. For this purpose, I'm going to uh, receive the commentary on the holy teachings, the perfection, the wisdom sutra, and practice accordingly. In order to benefit sentient beings and dedicate the roots of virtue to sentient beings. Oh, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> So to continue where I started uh, last week, so next, when do the perfection of wisdom sutras arise? Okay, so last week I mentioned about uh, um, three, uh, as there are three types of words. Words can be divided into three types. Uh, the first one is words spoken from Buddha's mouth. And the second one is the approved words or the authorized words. 
and the third one is uh, blessed words. So uh, when do the perfection of wisdom sutra arise? They arise from the mouth of the Buddha as well as from other persons due to the power of his blessing. So uh, the example for words spoken from the Buddha's mouth, uh, such as uh, yeah, so words, a verse summary of the perfection of wisdom in 8,000 lines. Mm. So the approved words, so the approved words can be uh, the prologue of the sutra or the chapter of the uh, of the uh, prologue. So basically, it refers to prologue or the sections of introductions. So um, according as I uh, take perfection the with uh, Hasutra, for example, the words uh, thus did I hear at one time, then those are in the sections of introductions and they are the example of uh, the approved words. So this is just to identify uh, the words uh, as it words such as uh, thus they are here one time, then it belongs to the category of the approved words. So regarding uh, the sentence thus they are here one time, I will explain it later. Mm. Also the blessed words, then uh, it can be divided into three again. The words blessed by the, uh, the holy body, the words blessed by the holy speech, and the words blessed by the holy mind. Mm. So the, the example for the words blessed by the body, the holy body, is Sutra of the Ten Bumis. And words, words blessed by the holy speech, the example is Sutra for eliminating uh, Ajata Shastru uh, regret. So words blessed by the holy mind again can be divided into three. Uh, blessed by the, uh, the meditative concentration, blessed by the power of truth, and blessed by the uh, exalted wisdom. So the word, uh, the example for uh, words blessed by the meditative concentration uh, can be the words in the Hasutra. So for uh, form is empty. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the example for uh, words blessed by the meditative concentration. So, uh, words blessed by the exalted wisdom. The example for this is uh, the mantra of uh, Nagas or the mantras of uh, Yakshas uh, as a blessed by the, the Buddha. So 
an example for words blessed by the power of truth uh, is words emit from you know, the words of Dharma, or the words uh, emit from the sounds of uh, God's real, God's drum. So God's uh, their drum, and then uh, it naturally emits the sound of Dharma or uh, words, or from tree, or from mountain, or from wall. And those are the example for words blessed by the power of truth. Well, that was a. Yeah. So uh, the perfection of wisdom sutra uh, is condensed into these three types of words. That so then they arise from the mouth of the Buddha as well as from other persons due to the power of his blessings, right? So uh, from other persons due to the power of a Buddha's blessings, then uh, uh, is through the dialogue or yeah it's through the dialogue of uh, Shariputra and Chenrezig. So Buddha's words is not necessarily uh, has to come from a Buddha's mouth. So it can be uh how say it can be uh how say yeah, it can be transmitted through the power of his uh, power of his blessings such as through the dialogue of Shariputra and Chenrezig. <laughs> So where were the perfection of wisdom sutras taught on virtue pig? So virtue pig is the, the usual translation English. So um, uh, literally it would be vulture uh, pal mountain. So usually it's called uh, vulture pig. Uh, if literally translate uh, the Tibetan words, it would be vulture pal mountain. So uh, here it talks about the locations where perfection of wisdom sutra was taught, right? So uh, when we talk about, uh, so we, we talk about four types of four excellences. Yeah, we talk about four excellences. The first one is uh, excellent place. The second one is excellent time. The third one is excellent teacher. And the last one is excellent entourage or retinue. So uh, this one, regarding the four excellences, uh, we will discuss it uh, in later context. So regarding the excellent time uh, is indicated by the sentence, thus did I hear one time. So this I will explain later. And the excellent uh, teacher refers to Buddha Shakyamuni himself. Mm. And the excellent place is uh, the vulture pig. Mm. And the excellent uh, entourage or retinues 
uh, those uh, thousands of uh, sanghas of uh, ordained, ordained monks and the thousands of and the great assemblies of those bodhisattvas, they are the example for uh, excellent uh, retinue. Sometimes on top of these four excellences, uh, another one, uh, there's one more to be added here is excellent uh, teaching or excellent dharma. And if this one is added, then the, uh, in this context, the excellent dharma uh, refers to perfect uh, Hasutra itself. Mm. Usually, the four excellences are listed. So uh, why is it called Vulture Peak or Vulture Pal Mountain? So there appears to be many ways of explaining. So, uh, and uh, one of the reason is the mountain, the top of the mountain is shaped like a vulture, but the mountain peak is shaped like a vulture. And the second one is, uh, it is shaped like a pile of vultures, vultures. And it was given the name because vultures protect the mountain or guard the mountain where many vultures ate uh, corpses. So there is another reason. And another reason is why is it called a pal, a vulture pal mountain? So it's because of the brilliance of the birds who are beings who understand uh, emptiness. Mm. Then from clearing stains, uh, from sorry, the clearing stains from lapis lazuli again says that uh, another reason could be when the subduer was fifty eight years old in the fire snake year, and he went to that mountain, and then it was shaped like a, a vulture head, and a demon then manifest himself into a vulture, and then took a Buddha Shakyamuni's robe and then dropped it on the mountain where it turned to stone. Then it become then it is well known as the Great Vulture Park. So um, the place, uh, which is the Vulture Peak or Vulture Palm Mountain, is a holy place where Buddha's uh, taught the perfection of wisdom. So it is a holy place. And then just like uh, the Vajra seat, also a holy place in Bogaya, then uh, they are indestructible by hardness. Uh, so uh, anything uh, has a very solid cannot destroy uh, these holy places uh, by the power of blessing. So it cannot, it is, they are indestructible or it cannot be destroyed by fire and is immovable. So in general, when we talk about intermediate state beings or battle beings, uh, they are unobstructive. So basically, uh, so they, they can go through uh, any uh, objects. However, holy places like uh, Bokaya, uh, the, the Vajra seed in Bokaya and also uh, Vulture Peak, then uh, they are uh, obstructive. So they cannot go through it. Mm-hmm. 
Jansu Nons in the top of the Chiro Jansu, the Hindu Jansu, the Nazan Jansu, the Sumi, the Tishin Dua, the Napa Nala, Shishin Jindu Sumi, the Dawa Jimmy Sijamala, the Nayan and Jeba Jeba. That Chinda Chalo Soji, the Yetin Jaji with Doji Pashi, the Jin of the Station. That Ramula, the Shin the Kandar Ramula Timba Sanji, Shitelola, Shiotrua, Shitelola, Shishin Dosu, but yes, near the Chin. Hmm. And regarding when uh, the perfection of wisdom sutras were taught, then there are uh, many assertions. So, for example, according to the scholars of astrology known as the three oceans, uh, Chuda Gyato, Hundu Gyato, and Mosan Gyato, they asserted that uh, Buddha taught the perfection of wisdom sutras on the full moon day of the uh, third lunar month, so it's the 15th of third lunar month, and entered Rivana on the 15th day of the next month. And then, uh, then, uh, then according to Chim, the translator of Cha and others, then uh, they assert that uh, how's it, the teacher set forth the perfection of wisdom sutras the year after he achieved Buddhahood. So basically, there are many uh, different assertions regarding when the perfection of wisdom sutra were taught. <laughs> Yeah, uh Sanjibi the <laughs> Yeah, so they assert that the teacher set forth the perfection of wisdom sutra the year after he achieved Buddhahood, right? Then some people, again, uh, they, they doubt that or refute uh, their assertions, saying that when the teacher achieved enlightenment on the 15th uh, day of the fourth lunar month, so it's a Sakatawa, Sakatawa, so and then a son was born to Amritodana, and that was Ananda. So Ananda was born to Amritodana, and Amritodana is uh, the youngest sibling in the family. And at the, at the time when he set forth the perfection of wisdom sutra in the third lunar month, 12 months after he achieved Buddhahood, then he had been just slightly more than 10 months since Ananda was born. Then how then could Ananda have been in the audience when the perfection of wisdom sutra was spoken? So again, they they, they refute it by, uh, by stating this doubt. So if uh, Ananda was only 10 months old, then how could he be in the audience of uh, the professional yeah, so, um, yeah, so this in his system uh, refers to Jiangyang Sheva Doje. So Jiangyang Sheva Doje refutes Chim Cha and others in, in this text. Say, so this assertion is uh, assertions of Jiangyang Sheva Doje. So, and then others, uh, they, they state. I'll say they, they say their doubt regarding uh, Jiang Sheva Doje's assertion, right? Then Jiang Sheva Doje again answer to those uh, answer to the doubt, saying that um, there is no fault 
because Ananda was not in the audience when the Perfection of Wisdom Sutras were initially spoken, but he was present when they were spoken later. Mm. So Jian Shiva says that uh, there is no fault, right? Uh, there is no fault in his assertions because Ananda was not in the uh, audience of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra when uh, when it was uh, initially spoken, but he was there when they were spoken later. But again, uh, it was refuted by these doubts in the prologue to the 8,000 stanzas says, as you are here one time, the transcendent victor was staying in Vulture Peak in Rajagriha with a great assembly of monks, 1,250 monks. They were all our hearts all, uh, who had exhausted the contaminants in control of all minds and, and achieved the excellent perfection with the exception of one person. And this was the Venerable Ananda. So this is the prologue in the 8,000 stanzas. So if Jaya Shiva says that, or oh, uh, Ananda was not in the audience when uh, Perfection of Wisdom Sutra was initially spoken, but later he was there. He was there when uh, when they were spoken later. Perfection of Wisdom Sutra was spoken later. Then this contradicts the uh, prologue to the eight thousand stanzas in uh, prologue in the eight thousand stanzas, saying that uh, only one is n because the the entourage, the audience, who were all our hearts already accept one and that was Venerable Ananda. So if uh, Ananda was not there uh, uh, when Perfection of Wisdom Sutra was initial, initially spoken, but it was there later, then uh, then it, it contradicts uh, Venerable Ananda being the, the Arhat, right? So if he was there and become an Arhat uh, when he was compiling the, the, uh, the words, then how could uh, the prologue in the 8,000 stanza saying that uh, only one uh, wasn't an Arhat venerable so if this prologue is the prologue from the time when the 8,000 stanzas were initially spoken, then it contradicts that Ananda was absent. 
uh, Hazrat Jamin Shiba's assertion that Ananda was absent. If this is the prologue from the time when the word of the Buddha's work was compiled, it contradicts the fact that Ananda was an arhat at that time. The Kazanti Patu, Patu Yang, this room in Yeah. If this is a prologue from some time in between, then it seems to contradict the Buddha's instructions to Ananda uh, in the Dhamma Sankiti to use these words when compiling his words. So basically, these are the uh, refutations. Uh, if the prologue is the prologue from the time when uh, 8,000 of 8,000 stanzas were initially spoken, and uh, when the words of the Buddhas was compiled, and uh, from some time in between. So basically, uh, at any time, uh, I'll say when the prologue, when the prologue is the prologue, at that time, then it becomes uh, there are refutations. So then some say that Ananda was even present before teacher uh, demonstrated a way to become enlightened. And, and because he's explaining Bhutan's uh, source of Dharma, as well as in the Lalita Vistara, saying that the young Prince Siddhartha was tested in the martial arts Ananda shots and arrow the distance of two kosha. So this assertion saying that Ananda was there even before uh, young, young Prince Siddhartha become enlightened. That then again, they, uh, there is a refutation to these doubts. So some say that there was an elder and younger Subhuti, Ananda, Udain, and Sutisha, etc., with one appearing earlier and the other later, so that Ananda will appear in the company of the young Bodhisattva, so a young Prince Siddhartha, this uh, young Bodhisattva, and was someone other than uh, the son of Amritodana. This is just now the assertion saying that uh, Ananda was born to uh, the son, uh, was born to Amritodana, right? And then, so uh, then this person say, some people say that uh, there is no fault in that assertion uh, because uh, how's it, uh, the Ananda here and the Ananda, uh, how's it, uh, being the son of Amrito Dana was two different persons with the same name. Mm. Pinjasin <laughs> Sweet <laughs> 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 
yeah, so Haru, uh, Ananda, uh, when he was uh, when he served uh, Buddha's uh, that time, then uh, Ananda was uh, Ananda hasn't uh, achieved the state of arhat. Uh, uh, yeah, Ananda hadn't had not achieved the state of arhat. So just to uh, tell a brief story about Ananda. So Ananda is the, the niece or the relative to uh, Buddha or young prince Siddhartha, Buddha. Yeah. So um, then at that time, then a group of uh, arhats, they gathered and discussed uh, Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni uh, needs a, uh, a good servant, uh, need a good servant or attendant. Then, uh, and ask, so who are who willing to become this, uh, the attendants of Buddha? And, and yet, no one, uh, I'll say, willing to become the attendants of Buddha. Then, and Buddha, uh, as I said, Sangi Gongshi, Rogi, Sangi Gongshi, the Ananda, Gombashi, Sung Yuna, Sangi Gongshi, the Dutch of Kashimishi, Sangi Gongshi, of Hakuwa. This Sangi Lakunga, Tuna, can we think of Tuna, they are put in a king and make conscious Sangi this on my score. Then, then Buddha uh, has uh, had a thought. So, uh, has, uh, maybe uh, Ananda is good. So, uh, uh, has, uh, Buddha didn't say it out. He just had a thought to himself uh, that oh, maybe uh, uh, Ananda is good. Then, uh, among the group of uh, arhats, then there are some uh, who, uh, say, who are able to read the minds of others, who has the supernatural powers and able to read the minds of Buddha. And then, uh, then uh, those arhats then express uh, as I say that and how about uh, uh, Ananda and how however Ananda was not in the group of discussions so Ananda didn't come for the dis didn't come for the discussions and then uh, those arhats say that how about uh, Ananda then uh, then Buddha replied or respond saying that uh, if Ananda accepted then it would be it would be good if Ananda accepted however whether uh, Ananda accept it, will accept it or not, and who knows? Then, uh, then uh, someone was sent to ask uh, Ananda uh, whether he is willing to accept, uh, whether he is willing to become the attendant of Buddha or not. Then, uh, then Ananda said that uh, Buddha is like the wheel turning kings, and he has a great powers, he has great charisma, and it's very difficult to uh, serve or to be the attendant of Buddha. And uh, Ananda was asked uh, three times uh, as whether he willing to become the attendant of Buddha or not. And uh, th three times Ananda turned down the, the request. That demo she was the leader, the Kanda Kungoli and Jeshi, the King of Kelema is a Buddha. Dangi Kelemi, the Ina Mili, Junsen Song. She in the channel that Sanji Kelly told the Nathanian Chashi Jimmy's Mili Sansu Song was. Mm. Then Ananda was asked a fourth time and fourth time and Ananda accepted, but accepted uh, with three uh, requirements. So uh, Ananda said that if Buddha 
uh, accepted my uh, three requirements, then I will become the attendant of Buddha. So the three requirements. The first requirement is uh, many people, uh, many uh, benefactors. They offer food, drink, uh, clothes to uh, Buddha. So, however, I'm not. I say, uh, yeah, yeah. It is not allowed to give any one of those offerings to me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so those foods, drinks, and uh, offerings and clothes, for example, are not allowed to uh, give to me. So this is the first requirement. And the second requirement is when Buddha uh, gives teachings, I have to be there. And uh, without my presence, uh, uh, the teachings uh, uh, the teachings is not allowed. yeah, so and the third requirement is uh, the time to uh, say the time for me to go to uh, uh, say go to as uh, the time for me to go to a uh, Buddha's, then uh, no one can stop me uh, whenever time whenever it is. So whether it is in the morning or uh, is at night, so no one can stop me from going to the uh, Buddha's site. So uh, I said I can go anytime uh, at my own wish. So, Ananda, having uh, mentioned these three requirements uh, to put uh, to Buddha, then Buddha uh, thought that the the reason or the uh, suggestions or requirements mentioned by Ananda are really uh, meaningful. Sanjigipena, Mm-hmm. So the first requirement is uh, how to say, uh, whatever uh, food, drink, and clothes offered to Buddha, I'm not allowed. So I'm referred to uh, Ananda. So I'm not allowed to uh, take any take any of it, or I'm not allowed. Uh, no one has say, yeah, I'm not allowed to take any of it, or. Yeah, I'm not allowed to take any of it. So the purpose of uh, stating the first uh, requirements or suggestions is because uh, to stop uh, people from uh, saying that 
Ananda becoming the purpose of Ananda becoming the attendance of Buddha is just for uh, the sake of food, drink, and clothes and uh, wealth. Kanda and the second requirement is uh, when Buddhists uh, give teachings, then uh, I have to be, uh, I must be there. And without uh, my presence, uh, a Buddha is not allowed to uh, give the teaching. As it, the, the teaching is not allowed. So, and there is a purpose of, for stating this uh, requirement and suggestions because in the future, uh, when I, so Buddha taught to himself, so when I, uh, pass into uh, Parajivana or when I uh, 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 separated from this world, then uh, Ananda is very intelligent. Then he able to, uh, how's he written uh, my words in, how's he able to put my words in, in written form and then compile the teachings and then able to preserve or guard the teachings. So see, and it has such uh, benefits. So uh, this is, as the Buddha taught to himself that uh, the, the reason and it is very meaningful to list the second uh, requirements. Tadukosangilakatukadu, and the third requirement is uh, Ananda is allowed to uh, they go to Buddha's uh, go to Buddha's at any time. So whether it's in the morning or at night, so no one can stop him from going to Buddha's, uh, going to uh, meet Buddha's. So the and Buddha, uh, how say uh, understand there is a great purpose of listing the third requirements because um, they are they are how say those public or whether it's an ordained person or whether it's a, 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 a ordinary beings or was it the, the lay persons so they, they face a they face a lot of difficulties and a lot of problems so when they face uh, such difficulties and problems that ananda uh, i'll say ananda wants to immediately tell these situations to buddha so that uh, those problems and those difficulties can be uh, eliminated immediately so therefore for this purpose uh, no one can no one uh, can stop Ananda from going to meet Buddha. Oh, that thing about this thing, that Sanji is a child, is called Sanji Shashishinirwa. Sanji, Sanji, Sanji Kelimaro. That Sanji Kelin, that is Kelim, but if you just say so, the Kelin, it is thing about that Sanji Shashiwa Chawa. Then Buddha, uh, having uh, accepted the three requirements or three suggestions, and then Ananda become, uh, became the attendance of Buddha. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
So the, uh, that, uh, that was the brief history of, uh, of uh, Ananda. So some say that there was an elder and younger Suputi, Ananda, etc. Right. So then according to clearings, uh, clearing stains from Lapis Lazuli, the superior Suputi must have just attained the state of an arhat at the time of the at the time that the perfection of wisdom sutra was spoken, and Suputi saw the truth for the first time, or newly realized the truth, on the day of the Buddha's descent from the heaven of the 33, to which he had descended to teach the doctrine to his mother. So, um, the Vinaya... Duwati Sungyu na yun siya? Duwati. Duwati. Duwati Sungyu. Duwati And the Vinaya also says that he attained the state of an arhat not long after that. Mm. And therefore, having provided many reasons why is it why it is correct that the perfection of wisdom sutras were spoken in the fire snake year when Buddha was 58 years old. But below, uh, yeah, then he explains that the Buddha set forth the perfection of wisdom cycle in the iron dog year when he was 51. Mm. So then uh, there must be a reason why they are, uh, why that many scholars disagree. So different scholars, they uh, assert differently. So this is what I think. So what I, I refer to Atenda Harama. So you think that, uh, as it, uh, consider the example of the year of the Buddha, of the teacher's birth. So in Chuji uh, Sakyapa system, it is earth dragon. In Mahapandita Sakya Sri system, it is fire snake. In Kalachakren Yuntuns, uh, system it is earth mouse and Atisha system it is wood ox wood ox and in Bhutan's system it is fire horse in Pu system it is iron monkey and according to the system of Chinese scholars it is wood tiger so although all are proven with scriptures and reasoning according to common standards the year of the teacher's birth is beyond the purview of those scholars so the year of the teacher's or Buddha's birth is uh, beyond their comprehensions. But <laughs> That's <laughs> Uh, 
这些人的人也是,他们说,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也是,他们也
那旁边是一些肉，再有毛毛的，再毛毛的小鸡的这多呢，多多是一些肉，别弄些那个小那个熊子嘛，熊子是小鸡呢，是鸡呢，那看他长个那个多多多多是啥地的哇，小那个嘛是鸡的哇，那小那个开心那边，用开心了小那个添加了毛毛鸡，是当的，小那个添加了毛毛鸡是当，小那个国家的毛毛鸡是当，但用鸡的添加的，添加的国家毛毛鸡是当，啊。用钱的地是大部分，小老百姓家里来帮忙吃的多。钱的地是，钱的地是，我钱的地是都帮忙吃当钱了。嗯。所以小老百姓家里来帮忙的。嗯。小老百姓家里来帮忙的。嗯。但现在你不单位呢，现在你呃，年啊了，你去涨啊了，帮忙吃的多。嗯。你涨啊了，是吧？嗯。我真的是，那帮忙吃当地是吃不多，是吧？嗯。是不？嗯，地，还是地，还是地，呃，不是，地啊，地过了崩。嗰只本地啊，啊本地先啲就係唔平，冇得做啦。So yeah, so regarding the hundred thousand or twenty five thousand sanzas, eight thousand sanzas, and then there is, uh, I say, then he also talks about another way of calculating or counting. That is section. So there are many sanzas, and then uh, I say, uh, a number of sanzas then is considered as a section. So. <clears throat> So regarding this section, then uh, say, yeah, the, the concept of section is like uh, I say they are a pile of I say they are a pile of grass, and then you 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 tie it and become one one uh, I say uh, one I say you you tie it with a uh, with rope, and then you become a pile of uh, uh, grass. So um, yeah, so some uh, they consider it seven hundred verses as one section, some. Uh, some they consider nine hundred thousand, sorry, nine hundred verses as one section. So some some consider seven hundred, some consider nine hundred as one section. So uh, regarding uh, the hundred thousand, uh, twenty five thousand and eight thousand stanzas of perfection of wisdom sutra, they are uh, say three hundred verses. Three hundred verses is considered one section. So these three stan these three sutras. So three hundred verses, uh, consider one section. So and regarding the 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 text that we study, Ha Sutra, so twenty five verses is considered one section. That is why we do not talk about the date of the Pambuts. That is why we do not talk about the Pambuts. We are going to discuss it. That is why we do not talk about the Pambuts. That is why we do not talk about the Pambuts. Tapi, seorang jenis itu sama seorang sendiri lah. Pambu cuci, dia tu dia pambu tangga tu si. Tapi seorang ni betapa lah seorang ni misalnya lah, pambu cuci cari tu doa, pambu cuci. Orang tu semua pandra mereka tu jenis ni kerana sena, jenis ni tinggal lah kanda sanji susun lah pada dua puluh macam macam. Umat ni lebih macam pambu doa, sanji ni macam sunjai susun lah pada. Tapi seorang pandra pun tak kebab pandra pun pambu doa. Tak kebab tu sebab sanji ni susun dia, seorang ni pandra pun cuci susun dia mana. Pe siapa nak cerita ni betapa betul ayah cello kan ni je zaman mato, lepas ini ambil sosa de, ya dulu ya tebal tu ni, tebal tu ni sanji ke masuk tu de, sanji ke sunjai ni sendiri cello kan ya tebal tu ya kan, ya sanji ke sunjai ni nala mati mati ni, si mati ni mati ni, ya masa masa ya, itu ni dua, pada tu semua yang orang pun ada cello, tak kanda ambil mereka yang jenis ni dua, ni pun jenis cembur ni semua ambil anda ni ada cello kan tu ambil anda sendiri yang jenis ni. Mm. So a certain number of verses then is considered as one uh, section, right? Like for example, for uh, the uh, the fast, intermediate, and brief uh, mantas, so the perfection of wisdom sutras, then three hundred verses is considered one section. As for uh, Hasutra, sutra, twenty five verses is considered one section. And there is a great purpose of uh, stating the section, how many sections in a sutra. So because to how uh, say. Uh, because is to abandon uh, the um, superimpositions and denigrations. Super is to abandon the uh, superimpositions and denigrations. So because in the uh, in the history, so uh, what uh, what Buddha said. So what Buddha said, like for example, Ha Sutra, there are 25, 25 verses, right? And twenty five verses is considered one section. So however, at that time, there are many uh, uh, non Buddhists. And they are great scholars as well, and they are very smart. And whatever Buddha said, then uh, how say they they create faults uh, by adding 
uh, one verse into, in, into the, the, Has the original Hasutra, or they take away uh, one verse uh, from the original Hasutra and to make it, uh, as it to make it, uh, how say, omit uh, by one verse, for example. So by stating how many verse as one section in the sutra is very important so that uh, these faults of superimpositions and denigrations can be avoided, can be stopped. ตาคันตาสันจิกัตสุเรตันตาชิบะอืมตาตะตินจิตสุมาอืมอันดาโลเกจินเซติอันดาจิบะอืมอันดาโลเกจินเซติตาคันตาตันตาโดโตมาจิ
da hirani mat kala ta indo langa ishi ishi jibindo doji nanu tujinda ta nanu doji nanju go cha ti chewura cha ti chewura nanji doji nanju go ta zambu che mena do wasa mena do doro wa ta tong sha de ti ba sha ti do So, and the reason why they are called uh, royal sutras is that in the past, the religious kings of Tibet they recited uh, those five sutras in their religious services. So, therefore, it's called they are called uh, royal sutras. The Ha Sutra is a sutra on view. The Atagyana is a sutra on deeds. The Vajra Vidarani is the sutra on ablution. So, this uh, Vajra Vidarani is a sutra on ablutions, right? So, as I did, uh, as I, uh, we do, uh, as I. Uh, As it uh, the chaptu puja, so we we do chaptu puja, right? Yeah. So this is the one. The Vajad Vidarani uh, is the sutra on ablution, of, uh, yeah. And Bada Badra Chari is the sutra on prayers, and the uh, Apite Apadi Desana is the sutra on the compassions of sins. That is the one. 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 Mm. Yeah. And the three, the vast, intermediate, and brief profession of wisdom sutra were spoken simultaneously because all of the requests are the same. And the sutras are similar in that there is a prophecy about Sister Ganga Devi at the point of explaining the practice of the pure land. The chapter in this verse is about the Sanjiji Ganga Ji. Yang dah dah cuci dulu tempat baru ni Maria's, lewa. Tapi betul, cuci cuci tu susu yang lurus, anda tu selang dua. And then, um, yeah, this sutra was were necessarily spoken simultaneously, uh, as if said by omniscient Buddha, because it is unreasonable for uh, one Buddha to repeatedly prophesize the enlightenment of one person. Right, then I want to the Sanjiji Ganga to cuci. So regarding the three turnings, the wheel of Dharma. So uh, they are so they are saying that uh, the three the yeah the three turning the wheels of Dharma were spoken uh, simultaneously, and there they are saying uh, that uh, three turnings, the wheel of Dharma, were spoken uh, gradually. So in terms of gradually, then the first turning, the wheel of Dharma, was at Varanasi, the second one at uh, Vulture Peak, and the last one at Vaishali. ダンマズチュンゴリンジドコアヨレスワヤンデデレマズピチチャドコアヨレスワヤンデデレマズピチチャドコアヨレスワヤンデソワデソンジキペタカタンボディチュジンコロデコビセナザンベリンデラタンボ
so the time when the perfection of wisdom sutras were recorded in books or in written form is known as the time of the third compilation of the word of the Buddha. It is not the case that, however, that the word did not exist at all in written form prior to that. So it refers to the previous uh, compilations of the word. so, uh, yeah, so if it is asked how the perfection of wisdom sutras were propagated and in which country, it is necessary to know who owned the perfection of wisdom sutras after the teacher passed into Ribbana. So there are eight groups of gods and so forth gathered together, but because they couldn't agree through discussions, so there was a scramble for them. So they grabbed. Uh, the teachings. So Naga has got the vast mother, the 100,000 stanzas. The gods got the 18,000 stanzas. The humans got the 25,000 stanzas. The demigods got the 10,000 stanzas. And the king of the Yakshas, Kubera. So Kubera or uh, Namtose. Some, uh, in Tibetan, it's called Namtose. So then got the 8,000 stanzas. <laughs> Mm. So there is a common saying uh, regarding the vast mother, the 100,000 stanzas were invited uh, by Nagajuna from the land of Naga. So then uh, regarding how the vast mothers got back to India, the king of the Nagas was ill and nothing could help him. A girl told his fortune. So a girl uh, here is not the, the ordinary uh, person. Um, uh, I say it could be a goddess. So a goddess uh, uh, told his fortune, uh, saying that in the land of humans, uh, there was a ma master named Nagarjuna who was skilled in the meaning of the two truths and who, if invited, would cure the king. Mm. Yeah, so in general, uh, the common saying uh, regarding the vast mother of 100,000 stanzas uh, were, was invited by Nagarjuna from the land of Nagas, so that is common. However, uh, it, it differed in terms of the reason why Nagarjuna went to the land of uh, Naga. So one is, uh, the first saying is because of ill, right? The, the king of Nagas uh, was ill. And another saying was, he went to the land of the Nagas, uh, that this is called the retrieval uh, another version explained that the master went to the land of Nagas looking for sandalwood to uh, build an image of Tara. So uh, because of this reason, then uh, Nagarjuna went to the land of Nagas and invited a uh, vast mother of 100,000 sutras to the land of human. <laughs> That's 
yeah, so when the boss mother was taken from the land of the Nagas, that way four chapters from the end were left in the land of Nagas, the Machia, the Paripucha, the Tama, the Tamokata, the Sata Parutita, and the Par Parindana. So uh, some say that, so I mean, this is just a saying, so whether uh, it's true or not, and it's beyond our comprehension. Yeah. So uh, there is a saying that uh, Nagarjuna went to the land of Nagas and then uh, invited uh, the the hundred stun, the vast mother to the land of humans. However, uh, I'll say um, those Nagas uh, stop him from going back to the land of humans. Then uh, Nagarjuna say Nagarjuna say that oh, I will come again. So because of this reason, then the four chapters uh, were left in the land of Nagas. Mm. So again, all these are the history regarding the perfection, uh, perfection of Wisdom Sutra. So some say that uh, the, the vast mother is not complete. Then others say that the present version of the vast mother has the full 100,000 uh, shlokas of verses. And the missing chapters are combined in the Api Kara Dhamma Tua chapter at the end. Therefore, it is in fact complete. Others have a way of filling in the filling in the sutra from the twenty five thousand and the eight thousand by taking the Maitreya Paripicha and the Damodkata to be one chapter on vows and Sada Parutita to be the second chapter and the Prindana Prindana to be the third. So adding those three chapters to the end of some versions of the mother, in fact, makes the five chapters. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. yeah, so then the Chidu Wuko says that they are also in the Chinese translation. Then regarding how the perfection of Wisdom Sutra were propagated in the snowy land of Tibet, then during the time of Chisong Tetsen, uh, Nyang Kamba, and also known as uh, Lang Kamba, Kocha, Kocha Java acquired the ability to memorize without forgetting and was sent to India to bring back the perfection of wisdom. Mm -hmm. He memorized the vast uh, mother, covered his back with a cover of gold, covered his front with a cover of turquoise, hide it with a string of pearls and returned to Tibet. What he had in his mind was dictated in four volumes. He did not say uh, Sata Sahasrika in Sanskrit and is called the Red uh, Draft Translations of the Mind, etc. So basically these are the, the history and I do not know uh, much about the history. I do not know well the history. And then the rest, so you can read yourself. So, uh, as it is about the, uh, how, say how uh, it is translated 
uh, how's it, uh, the, the text, how it is translated in four volumes, etc. Then you can read. Uh, is it will be good then if you can uh, remember the history. As if you understand the history, how this perfection of wisdom sutra come about, and uh, sometimes, however, it is difficult to um, remember the history of the history of it as well, because it's I say it's not something that we can think about, right? It's some, not something that we can think and understand. It's just to uh, understand. It's just to 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 read and then to know what uh, the uh, what the history is. So and you can read it yourself. And the most important. And the more important one will come later in next class, which is uh, the beginning of the actual text. So it's something that, because uh, it's something we can think about, contemplate, and understand. Logic的 Yeah, so next class, I'm going to start uh, the meaning of the parts. Uh, uh, we are going to start the, the Heart Sutra itself. So, um, I say regarding the history, then you can uh, search online uh, for uh, those history uh, translated in English or translated in Chinese, then you can read them, then you can you will have a better understanding. So, next class, then we are going to start the, the, the Heart Sutra, right? And before we start it, start uh, the Heart Sutra, then we will recite together this verse. So I bow down to the mother of the conquerors of the three times, the perfection of wisdom inexpressible by words or thoughts, which is unproduced and unseized by the entity of the sky, the object of the wisdom of unique knowledge. So uh, I'll say, uh, this verse is, is regarded as a very precious verse and uh, very auspicious to recite uh, at the, uh, before we begin the Hasutra as well, because uh, it is a verse uh, is a praise to the mother of the perfection of wisdom. Yeah. So uh, this verse, uh, His only Salama uh, sometimes will recite this verse in the place of uh, reciting uh, whole Hasu, uh, in, in, in full length because of the time constraint. So uh, another uh, custom is in three great monasteries and in other monasteries, uh, they when they recite Kangyu and Kangyu and Tengyu. So yeah, when they recite these uh, collections of uh, scriptures uh, and texts, then uh, at the beginning they also recite this verse. <laughs> So next class we are going to start uh, Hasutra, Sutra, and yeah, then there are explanations regarding the Hasutra. Sutra, and <clears throat> and yeah, so I will stop here. I'll stop here today. Can I ask one question, Geshila, please? Uh, Sally here, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> um, this this is actually regarding the um, mothers, the seventeen mothers and son. Is the Heart Sutra one of the 17 mothers and son? Because the Yumse Chupin, Yumse Chupin, the Sham Ningbo, a Sham Ningbo, and then Yumse Yumse Chupin, and all that trick you know. She didn't only cheek in us. She didn't look at you, your son, no one will sit to you. She didn't look at you. She didn't look at you. 
I I ask this also because um, in the essence of the Heart Sutra, um, His Holiness did mention that the Heart Sutra is one of the 17. But Geshe-la was saying that the three, you know, the extensive, the intermediate, and the condensed version uh, is is the the one, but the you know the rest are not so. Yeah, what what Geshe-la was saying earlier on. So I was just wondering because if the Heart Sutra is one of the seventeen, then it is important. No, we can't dismiss the rest other than the three. うん、うん。<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Yeah, uh, Hasutra is one of the uh, 11 sons. So, uh, 17 mothers and, and sons, right? Six mother and 11 sons. Hasutra is one of the 11 sons. So, why? Uh, so, uh, we say that uh, 17 mothers and sons, uh, there is a force of uh, how's it being too many or too little, right? So in terms of, so when uh, the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra uh, were condensed into these 17 mothers and 17 mothers and sons category, so there is such force of being too many or being too little in terms of the number 17. So then why did I say that, uh, how's it to, uh, to uh, condense or yeah, to condense or to subsume the perfection of wisdom sutras into the category of three, the vast, intermediate, and brief, is because um, it has, uh, has it, the, the way of categorizing or subsuming into these three categories is free of faults, of being too many or too little. Okay. <laughs> Doja uh, how is it the faults of being too uh, little? So, for example, the one how is it there are many perfection of wisdom sutras, right? So, uh, one of it is Kokundu Sampo, another one uh, is Lana Doje, Dawe, Dawe Ningbo. Yeah, so they are, uh, they are not able to be subsumed in the category of uh, 17 uh, mothers and sons. So, you had uh, so such categorizations as uh, such faults. And uh, when it says mother and son, why does it, why is it called mother and sons? あ、かんだ。うがらばちゃんと。うがらばせ、今だんだんてすごい。ちゃんと。うがらばだんだん。うん。うがらばだって。ポジニュム、ニュムで民タビキムゼンでかれ。だ、ミツコ、ミツジョ
Yeah. Uh, the reason why they are called uh, they are called mothers is uh, because of the because of their objects of expressions. So uh, there are eight topics, uh, eight topics of yeah, eight topics. Mundo gengi ngubo kiro ayjala. Mundo gengi ngubo kisa tiro. Yeah. So uh, there are eight topics in uh, the uh, ornament of clear realizations. So. Uh, they are called mothers because they are the sutra. They are sutras, uh, say who, uh, say who, who states uh, uh, specifically regarding these. Yeah, who states specifically these eight topics in ornament of clear realizations. Therefore, they are called mother. Yeah, because they are sutra, who uh, with who states specifically the eight topics of clear ornament for realizations. Therefore, they are. Uh, they, they are given the name mother. But that the the yeah, so regarding uh, the 17 mothers and sons, uh, I'm not saying that they don't they don't exist. They do exist. It's just that um, uh, how's it categorizing in this way, it has thoughts of uh, being too many and being too little. Nikola, mm -hmm. I'd just like to know whether the Vajra Tidaka Tanikato Sutra is that part of this uh, series? Is it inclusive into the what you call seven mothers and uh, seventy mothers and sons. Uh, and the sons are they included there? They mm. try to know, yeah. Hmm. Do you know? 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 Dojjibindo is Mr. is not uh, subsumed in these 17 mothers and sons. Okay. Yeah, so uh, regarding 17 mothers and sons, then what are they? Then, uh, yeah, if you're interested, then I will, uh, I will send it, I will send it out uh, tomorrow. Um, do we have time for another question? Yeah? This is regarding the Buddha's words. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, so the Buddha's words, uh, Gishla had explained it that the blessed uh, words, uh, uh, it could be words blessed by the holy body, by the holy speech, by the holy mind. So, for example, uh, blessed by the holy body is Sutra of the Ten Bhumis. How is it blessed by the holy body? What, what does it mean to be blessed by the holy body? And also holy speech, and also holy mind. What 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 qualifies the sutra of the ten bhumis to be, uh, you know, the blessed words blessed by the holy body? Yeah, 
กูยังคันดิชิงลาบะเลยใส่จุกิโตตะกูกินนัมเบอร์ดาบะเลยตินตะกูกินนัมเบอร์ดาบะเลยดิเจลเปเปเปเปเปเปเปเปเปเปเป
Yeah, so there is a specific reason why it is an example for this, uh, the words blessed by the Holy Speech. Uh, then, in order to understand the reason, then uh, I'll say, then, uh, I'll say we have to tell the story regarding the Ajata uh, Shatru. So, in the past, uh, they are I say uh, there were uh, such custom before uh, a child uh, was born. Then they will uh, ask. Uh, I say they will consult uh, those uh, fortune teller, and then and and uh, regarding uh, their future, regarding the future of the the, uh, the child. Then uh, this uh, the parents of Ajata Shatru then uh, consulted a fortune teller and was told that uh, this uh, this son uh, will kill the parents. So. Then uh, the parents asked why uh, this, this son of mine will kill me because and then, then the fortune teller says because of the kingship. So because of the uh, kingship, then uh, will kill the parents. Then uh, the parents say that, oh, uh, how say I will still give birth to this uh, to this son because to this child because uh, how say I will uh, give my uh, king uh, kingship to uh, to my son. Uh, how say uh, how say yeah, so uh, say, uh, they say it's okay to give birth to the uh, to the son uh, because uh, the parents will uh, pass the kingship to this son uh, early. So uh, how say when he become uh, I say, uh, grown up, then uh, I will pass my kingship to him, and then uh, the parents uh, will practice uh, dharma in the secluded area. Then <laughs> That's the <laughs> Mm. 
那是日记嘛，写个那东日报嘛，后来他是写的什么？写个那东日报嘛，后来他是写的什么？写个那东日报嘛，后来他是写的什么？写个那东日报嘛，后来他是写的什么？写个那东日报嘛，后来他是写的
Uh, we conclude with dedication. We dedicate the roots of virtue accumulated, especially through these Dhamma discussions. May be a complete cause for Buddha Dhamma to flourish to all ten directions and for sentient beings to have excellent happiness. We also dedicate these roots of virtue to uphold. uphold all upholders of the Buddha's teachings in the Ten Directions, represented by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and also to our uh, our beloved teacher, Kepsha Lama Subhadramachir, so may they uh, live eons long, uh, excellent health, and may their enlightened activities and holy wishes be accomplished instantaneously. We also dedicate these roots of virtue to the world peace, and may excellent happiness prevail the world. May a pandemic, wars, conflict, and disaster be pacified immediately and we also dedicate these roots of virtue to those who pass away and those who are in the state of suffering because of especially because of wars conflict and disaster and pandemic then may their uh, negativities uh, be pacified immediately and may they quickly achieve the state of enlightenment Dove <laughs> Thank you.